Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Finding America. Well, this weekend was unbelievably hot. It was just boiling hot. So we decided to go back to the place where Chris found his Confederate belt buckle. And uh, we've hunted a few times before, but we were still confident that there was plenty there still to be found. And I have to tell you, uh, it turned out we were right. Uh, like we always say, the place is never hunted out. Well, we're up uh, bright and early. And uh, literally my very first signal, I kid you not, uh, I was getting like a 1222. And I'm like, ah, oh, heck, dig it. And uh, I pop it out, and I was like, oh, my gosh. I got to yell silver across the field to uh, Chris. And, uh, yeah, I got a war nickel. First signal of the day. You just got to love that. And uh, looks like it's a Philadelphia mint mark. I don't know what year. <laughs> it's just crazy. First signal of the day. Let's see. Boy, it's cleaning up nice. All right, appears to be 1945P. So that is awesome. That's a heck of a way to start the day. Yeah, let's hope that continues. Now, well, next good target was uh, just above Pole Tavern, and then about 1221. Yeah, it was only about three, four inches down, but a pretty nice older buckle, probably a suspender buckle of some type. But uh, definitely has some good age to it. So, pretty cool find. And uh, yeah, we'll see what comes up next here. Been going at it for, I don't know, about 45 minutes. Uh, digging up a few neat things here and there. Nothing special. But uh, got over here to the hard packed area. No grass. I always like to hunt these areas. And uh, I managed to get a 1244 with my uh, small 5 inch coil really having to go real slow and pick through the uh, iron and uh, I kept digging down until I popped it out and it uh, does appear to be a silver dime and it looks like a rosy so just go ahead and rub that one off there you go 1963 yeah see if we got a mint mark for the heck of it yep Denver mint mark I had two silvers not too bad before 10 in the morning so uh, I will definitely take that. Man, that's awesome. That's kind of cool little find. Huh? That little squeaker, a little 1228, and uh, cleared out a rusty nail, and I still had the target in the hole, and uh, I did find it. It's a, uh, it's actually a wing, a single wing. It's like a little necklace pendant. Kind of cool. And, uh, I don't think I've ever seen that before. Is that a pretty cool item there? I'll take that. Well, uh, Chris came up. Uh, as you can see, he's uh, he's in the prison yard. No, it's actually on the other side of the fence here. We got permission from the warden for an hour <laughs> hunting. <laughs> but he found it's this good behavior. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he found this really cool piece. It's like. Uh, it almost seems like it's lead, but I, I think it might be some other kind of metal, but it's a it's a wheel, obviously, but I think it's to maybe an old toy locomotive or something. The way it is, it almost looks like it rode on a track or something, but yeah. Yeah, very cool, very old. So that's pretty cool find. Yeah, I guess it, it must be lead. It's, it rang up like a, a little bit higher than a bullet, I guess. Yeah, well, that's pretty neat, man. Yeah, it's different. Yep. Well, I had to take a step back from this one and just uh, have Chris look at it and get a little breather here because uh, I got something very, very cool in the hole and it was like half an inch down. Uh, it's up on this embankment that they pushed up a long time ago when they tore this house down. But I got a 1242 and I was not expecting this. Look at this thing. It appears to be sterling. It is pretty amazing. And on the top of it, look at that. 
I thought it was a shaker, and it's in the shape of a star. The shaker holes, but I don't know. I have no idea what this was used for, but it's actually got hearts and clubs. Um, just really ornate. This is just really cool. I don't know. It's very old. And uh, we are back in the colonial town. Matter of fact, we're in the same spot that uh, Chris found his Confederate buckle. He just decided to come over here and uh, hit it again with the small coils. And uh, done pretty good so far. And then this big piece of silver came out. Well, Chris called me over. Finally. And uh, I can't believe you found one of those. I got my sorry. I'll be darned. Uh, Southern Railway lead bale seal. Yes. We know what those are now. Yeah, that's the fourth one we've had in about a month. Funny thing is, the first one I ever dug, I dug right there. <laughs> about an elbow's length away. Yeah. I dug it from underneath that root. That was the very first one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And uh, he found another one right there. So maybe uh, they had a package and there were two bale seals and they cut them and boink, boink, and uh, there they are. <laughs> Pretty cool. Very cool. Well, I'm glad you finally got one. Yeah, full yeah. one. Because uh, that same day I found my first one here, you got a uh, Knoxville bale seal. Yeah, that's right. Right out of here too. So. Off centered, I think. Yeah, that's the third one out of this spot. Yeah. Very cool, man. Yeah, Chris came over. He found a pretty cool item. Little key. Cl Clum or Clum? Huh. Clum Manufacturing Company. Look at it. It says Milwaukee. That's cool. But it's actually got a patent date on the back. Huh. It says, uh, what, 81516, it looks like. 1916 or 2016. <laughs> yeah, pretty sure that's going to be 1916. <laughs> Let's see if I can get you a good look at it. There you go. And the other side is pretty cool, too. Wow, I've never seen that key before. Uh-uh. Very cool, I like it. Oh, Chris called me over, he said he found something kind of cool. All the razors we've dug up, I've never gotten one of these. No. It's the razor box. That's really cool. Gillette. That does say Gillette on it. Uh, world something, I didn't scratch it all off, but. How we doing? Well, we'll get that cleaned up, give you all a better look at it, but uh, that's pretty cool. I've never dug one of those. Not in that shape. Huh. Cool deal, man. Yeah, cool. Well, I got a, uh, next thing I got was uh, like a 1211, 1210. It was a little lower than a nickel, but it sounded good, so I went ahead and dug it, and I'm glad I did. I got a really nice thimble, and it's not smashed or dented, and pretty nice. Look at that. Look how nice that cleans up. It's shining up, isn't it? Wow. <laughs> I, I don't think it's silver, but yeah. it was ringing way too low, but uh, boy, it sure is cleaning up nice. So I'll get that cleaned up, and uh, I do see a little bit of writing on it, but it might just be a patent date or, let's see. Huh. Tell you what, let me get this cleaned up and I'll give you a better look at it. I think it says England. Well, it does it. say England on it. That's about all it says on it. But I'll get it cleaned up when I get home and uh, I'll give you a better picture. Well, uh, Chris is uh, sweating. Sweating and the key meister today. <laughs> Got another old yeah. key. That's pretty cool. Yeah, Graham. It says uh, Derby, Connecticut. And on the back, it's stamped. It looks like H-O-S-S-E, Nashville, Tennessee. Huh. There's periods abbreviated. I'm not sure what that would be. I have to look it up. It's definitely got some age. Uh, I'd say at least 30s. A couple of neat keys out of here today. Well, we are back at the construction site. We just couldn't resist it, even though the ground is like concrete and it's pretty warm out here. And we've got a 
another friend with us. Uh, Chris and I are out here with our buddy John. And uh, John got a, something pretty cool. What'd you get, buddy? It looks like a bezel to pocket watch. Got some, got some color, but I don't know if that's... Yeah, a little gold plating on the winder. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Chris found a pocket watch bezel out here last time, too. That'll probably clean up pretty good. Yeah, yeah. shine to it. Pretty yeah. cool. All I right. It'll shine. I want to show you guys this, too. I was heading over to check out John's uh, pocket watch bezel, and I saw this sitting in the dirt. And I was like, did one of y'all dig this? And they're like, no. So I guess uh, the dozer kicked it up, but I am not a bottle expert, but I, I've never dug one of these. It says trademark on top, Vaseline, Cheeseboro, New York. I've never seen this variety before, so it seems to be pretty early. A little screw top jar, but uh, I like that. I'm definitely going to keep that for the collection. So I was pretty happy with finding that Vaseline jar. Uh, I really never found that particular variety, and it looked pretty early. Um, but then I started thinking, you know, it's kind of a product we take for granted. We don't really know that much about it, so I decided to delve into it a little bit. And... It turned out that the company was originally found by Sir Robert Cheeseboro. And he started his career as a chemist in the middle 1800s, refining kerosene from the oil from sperm whales. Now around 1859, Sir Robert uh, Cheeseboro decided to go down to Titusville, Pennsylvania. And it was there that they had started some of the very first oil drilling rigs in the country. Uh, with his background in kerosene, he was naturally interested in checking out the, the production of oil. And when he got there, he saw that the men that were doing the drilling had this byproduct from drilling, this natural byproduct they called rod wax. And they would use that on their cuts and burns. And it actually healed their cuts and burns really well. And he became quite intrigued. So Cheeseboro collected samples of that product and took it back to his laboratories and he refined it into a, a very nice, smooth, clear petroleum jelly. Now, he originally called this product Wonder Jelly. Uh, and luckily, he had second thoughts about that. So he decided to call it Vaseline. And the reason he chose that name, it was derived from two words. Uh, first word was from the German word for water, which is Vasa. And also for the Greek word for oil or olive oil, olim. So he decided to call it water oil or Vaseline. So in 1872, Vaseline was born. So before he took the product to market, he had done all kinds of testing on himself with cuts and bruises and burns, and uh, it really did work well. So he started taking it around chemist shops, but none of them were ready to trust the product. So one really nice day, he decided to go to New York, and he had a huge crowd, and he was up there speaking to them about the product, and he took a flame and he burned his arm right in front of them. And of course this shocked everyone and then he took Vaseline and applied it to the burn. And everyone was pretty impressed with that stunt. So he started handing out free samples and the product started to catch on finally. Now he had so much faith in his product. It was even rumored that he ate a spoonful of Vaseline every single morning. Uh, and those rumors were actually substantiated when he was asked directly and he's admitted to it. And he says, yeah, I've eaten a spoonful of Vaseline for many, many years. And I have to tell you, he lived to a ripe and well-lubricated age of 96. So hopefully now we all know a little bit more about the product that we've taken for granted. And uh, even a little bit about its uh, inventor, Sir Robert Cheeseboro. But, uh, and I guess you can say the rest is history. And as all of us on Finding America know, history makes a find to treasure. Well, next target was a real bear to get out. It was jammed in between these roots down here. It took me forever. But I pulled out two old keys from the, probably the 30s. And uh, they were on a ring together originally. But uh, pretty cool. This is a master lock and this is an Ilco. But uh, very nice little ornate little keys. So that's pretty cool. Fun. Chris came over, found something different. Wow. That's an oldie. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Let's see if we can get that in the light. Let's see if I can get it here. Wow, that is an old one, man. I guess it would be up to a water supply. It kind of looks like... Almost gas looking, but could be water too. I don't know. A keg? Yeah, it does look like an old keg tap right there. Uh, that's pretty cool, man. Neat. Definitely gave you a big signal on that one. Oh, yeah. 
Now, Chris called me over and uh, tell me what you told me, man. Well, I thought this was a flower tag. Yeah, like a rose tag? Yeah, but uh, I started scratching at it and it said good for 10 cents. Oh boy. It is a token. A square token. It's going to need some cleaning, but. Oh, it'll come out. On the bottom, you can make out dental cream. And I think the word Colgate. Yeah, that's an oldie. Dental that's cream. My favorite brand. Yeah, there you go. John's a retired dentist, so uh, <laughs> we, we have our dental cream expert on yeah, site. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, of course well, dental, dental cream was toothpaste. Yeah. But good for ten cents. Uh, yeah, you're probably looking at a twenties token here. Yeah, that's old. Very square. nice and a square token to boot. Blooming. Awesome yeah. job, man. That's awesome. That's a neat one. Yeah, boy. Well, I'd say that was another cool hunt. We found some things that we'd never seen before and learned some new things too. Um, but don't go away just yet. We've got some really cool historical photos coming up in just about 15 seconds. And, uh, and I just want to thank you all for checking out the video. And we can't wait to see you next week on Finding America.